Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Tracy. And this is She's on Top, the place where we celebrate, elevate, and connect women. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel and hit on that bell icon. That way you get notice of all of our new videos. We also have a membership community and it's a great place to connect with other women, collaborate and help promote each other's platforms. We'll put all the information in a link below, but if you wanna take your business to the next level or you just wanna connect with some amazing women, please check it out. Today, we are talking with the amazing Fatima Zaidi, who is the CEO and founder of Quill, the world's first one-stop podcasting company. This is part two of an interview we did with her. And this interview is all about podcasts, how to start one, why you need to start one, how to promote it, and some incredible tips from an expert in the field. Our first interview with Fatima was all about sales because she's also an expert in that. And you can see the link to, to that below. But today specifically, we wanted to talk to her about podcasting and why and how she started her podcasting company, Quill. Erin Burry, who was actually on one of your previous episodes, mm -hmm. uh, her and I used to run an agency together called 88, where we worked with enterprise teams and various marketing tactics. And one of the biggest things that I started noticing in the last year before um, 88 got sold to Diamond Marketing, we saw that companies were moving aggressively into the podcasting space for a few different reasons. But the thing that I found so fascinating about it as a medium was unlike other marketing tactics that are very much about mass targeting people like performance marketing, Google ads, content, PR, podcasting actually wasn't about mass downloads. The more engaged and intimate and niche your audience, the better the success results. And so it was just contrary to any other form of marketing that we had done. And so I started following the industry because I was such a huge podcast consumer. I listened to on average 10 shows a week and saw that the conversion rates were at about 60%. 60% uh, of people that were interviewed for a mid-roll study said that they had purchased a product or service after listening to a pod podcast. And so for me, I compared that to traditional advertising that converts at one to 2%. And I was like, you know, this is a really interesting space to play in. And brands were obviously starting to notice. So I decided to productize our services and launched Quill, which is the world's first marketplace for podcasters, as well as our agency, which is a team, a full service team that does production and marketing for brands that are looking to move into the space. So we have both sides. If you're an indie podcaster who doesn't have big brands, Brand budgets. Uh, we have a curated marketplace where you can hire freelancers to help you. And if you are a brand looking to move into this space, then you can work with our full service team. And we also launched the Listen In Conference in LA, which is the world's first enterprise podcasting event. It's fantastic. I mean, we we spoke briefly before this and we've checked out your platform. It's fantastic. You know, Jess and I are thinking about doing a podcast and, you know, you are the guru we will come to for all the advice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I have another, like, is a podcast right for every brand? Like, does it does it depend who your audience is? What kind, or is it anyone can do a podcast? Anyone can do a podcast and whether or not it's right for your brand is very much subjective to a lot of things to do with your brand. And so what I always say to people is, you know, take, it's not that much money to start a podcast. Why not take a part of your experimental marketing budget to test and try one? You could see that it completely, you know, is like blown out of the water with success results, or you could find that it's not necessarily a tactic for you, but it's a very low risk. Um, I would say financial investment for you to at least get started and give it a, a try. Um, the other thing to also keep note is People who listen to podcasts are typically educated, affluent, millennial professionals that account for 80% of the workforce uh, with purchasing power. And so I don't know if your company is looking to target that demographic. I would be surprised if you weren't. Maybe a podcast doesn't make sense for, you know, a nursing home or, you know, if you're looking to sell catheters or, you know, if it's like a product that's very much geared towards uh, a the, the higher end of the baby boomer segment, then it might not necessarily make sense because the audience that are typically listening to podcasts range from, I would say, 18, although we're seeing more and more Gen Z people tuning in all the way until I would say 45 is probably, uh, 45 to 50 is typically the, the cutoff point. Again, these are just uh, generalized stats. So of course, like my, my dad is a huge podcast consumer and he's 76. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, 
an older generation won't be interested in listening to podcasts. But if you are typically a brand that's listening or looking to reach a global audience in that age bracket, then podcasting is definitely for you. And I would say that's probably 80 to 90% of the companies that are out there. It's, you know, it's funny, we started to look at it because though we will always be, you know, passionate, we're passionate storytellers. And mm-hmm. my, my feeling is I've told story in a lot of mediums. It's why we got into digital in the first place. So it's, it's just another venue. But what I also think that's so amazing about podcasting is it's real estate that nobody else owns right like you can listen to a podcast while walking people listen to them in the car so that's a big huge thing but what do you think you said you listen to 10 podcasts a week Mm -hmm. so what makes a successful podcast what makes a podcast what are the ones that stand out do you have a kind of why of what what we think it is i've actually written a lot of articles about what makes a really good show. And it's again, very subjective to the consumer or the person who's consuming the content. You know, I think, you know, you sort of hit the nail on the head, which is podcasting is probably the only marketing tactic where you're actively reaching people who are engaged with another activity. And they are, that actually increases engagement, doesn't hurt engagement. So I love consuming podcasts because it allows me to be productive while consuming content. It's like a double whammy for me. And busy millennial professionals are typically always looking to be efficient with their time. There's just not enough hours in a day. I can't sit there and read a book or watch a Netflix show, but I can listen to podcasts while walking my dog or commuting to work or doing the dishes. And so what makes a really good show, I would say it's a combination of a few things, making sure that you're putting out content that doesn't look and sound like content out there today. One of the, one of my favorite shows today is, um, it's called Girlfriend, where they highlight, um, I would say, it's, it's, a, it's a show very much geared towards pioneer women who are looking to make a mark. And I really enjoy the show because it is actually hitting on diverse programming. Unfortunately, podcasting is an industry where there isn't a lot of diversity, both in the hosts as well as the type of guests that you're bringing in. And so any podcast that I would say is different typically will catch my eye. Uh, other types of content that really helps is, you know, making sure you have a really clear format and structure that you map out your ideal listener profile. So you're creating a show for an intended audience. You can't be everything to everyone that just isn't feasible or possible. And so um, I can very much when I'm listening to a show, know if they've customized the content to sort of hit a very specific uh, target demographic. Um, And then making sure that you're, you know, high production quality, great music, that you have a good production team around you, that you're bringing in valuable content that resonates with people. Um, And then marketing your show effectively as well. That's half of the battle. Um, So again, there's just so many different layers and components to creating a good show. But, um, you know, I think it's sort of a process. It evolves over time. And so your show doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as you get started and then use those analytics and insights to keep creating a better show. This information is also fantastic, but I was wondering, is there different ways to marketing a podcast than marketing, you know, video? So for example, you know, we use YouTube and there's certain times that you have to post and there's tags and there's (laughs) algorithms. Is it a similar process for podcasts or is it a different playing field? I would say there's definitely elements to creating a podcast that are very similar and overlap with other forms of content like video. The, you know, uploading process is pretty much the same. The distribution, which typically is on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Um, I would say marketing tactics typically tend to look different. Uh, When you're promoting a, a, a video content, for example, I find that social ads work really well on Google or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, but social ads typically don't support in long, in spiking your audience growth and so tactics that really work well for podcasting are Spotify advertising, contests, PR awards, tactics where you're actually engaging with your audience and listeners that help you reach new places, new audiences and new places. Um, I will say though that typically I find that a lot of people are so caught up in the production side of things that they don't necessarily focus on the marketing piece, whether it comes to their show, launching new episodes, or even just, you know, video content, YouTube. It's, you know, really great that you're doing this interview, but I think half of the battle is actually making sure that it's getting in the hands and ears of the right people. Uh, So I was really fixated and emphasis on the marketing piece. 
And I think just like companies had a phone number in the 1980s for their business, in the 1990s, they had a website in the early 2000s, it was social media. I think in the next five to 10 years, every company will either be advertising on a podcast or they'll have their own. We really hope you enjoyed this conversation and got some good tips about podcasting. We're actually launching our own podcast in February. So stay tuned for more information. And if you are thinking of launching a podcast, or maybe you already have one but need some extra help, make sure to check out Quill because they really are the one-stop tops, one-stop shop for podcasters. And we've got the link below for them. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and also leave comments because we really do like your feedback. See you next time.